Hey everybody, today we're going to be going over how to put a knocking point on your bow's string. So we're going to check out what you need. So here is what you're going to need. Besides a bow that is strung, you will need some halo serve. You want the range to be between 0 0.014 and 0 0.019. Any color is acceptable. Next up is a pair of scissors because you need those to cut the halo serve. Following that, you may want some source of fire in order to melt the serving together. Next up is a marker to mark where you're going to put your knocking point, followed by a bow square so that you can measure the correct distance and height of your knocking point. You will also need a knock, which will allow you to put a second knocking point under the knock itself. And last but not least, a knife or something with some sort of blade so that you can cut off the bad knocking point if you mess up or if you are just practicing. All right, now that you know what you need, we're gonna go and put a knocking point on this string. All right, so now we have the bow set up so it's easy for you guys to see. Normally you'd want a stabilizer on this bow so that you can uh, have it propped up so that you can do it yourself. But to show you guys the best way to put a knocking point on the bow, I have it set up this way. Now, as you can see, I have my bow square on the string. I already have it pre-marked because I've done numerous knocking points uh, in my time of shooting. Um, so I already have it pre-marked. Um, I would recommend for somebody, you know, their first time putting a knocking point on, you probably want to start from 1 16th from the center. So if you can see here, and we'll, uh, we'll zoom in for you. You have your first line, that's the center line, that's center, so we're going to want one up, that'll be a sixteenth, the next one up from there would be the one eighth, so I have it already marked with a piece of tape, so I have it set up there, that's my top knocking point. Now note, your knocking point will change if you go and tune your bow and you change your brace height and such and your tiller. That will affect your knocking point, so you would then have to redo it. But from here, you may want to mark with a marker the, uh, the point you wish to put your knocking point on. You would then remove your bow square and proceed to cut a piece of string. Here I am using the Halo Serve from BCY. Um, this is the point zero one four. I recommend the point zero one four. I wouldn't go higher than point zero one nine because it, it gets too thick and you end up getting a lot of contact between the knocking point and your uh, finger tab. So I prefer the smaller serving. So we're going to cut that with the scissors. Uh, you probably want to give yourself a good like six to eight inches just because you can then get some pull to make it nice and tight. So we cut that. Now since I already have one on here I normally shoot with two knocking points. So this will be my top knocking point, and I usually put on a bottom knocking point. So if you have the first one done, marked with your marker, you put it on, I will show you how to put on the second one. This one I will actually go through making the knocking point itself. So you're going to take your string, you're going to take your knock, you're going to click it onto your string. So while it's hanging there, you're going to put your string right next to it. 
your halo serve. And you're going to do a really simple cross the two strings and you're going to loop one under. It's going to give you this nice smooth knot. So we're going to go bring this back to under the knocking point. Now this is a, you know, it's very important that you get this right the first time. You can't correct it later on because you build down from where you lay your first uh, string. So, as you can see, I have it right under the knock. I'm going to tighten it, and that's where the length comes in. Having a longer string will let you wrap your fingers on it and then give it a nice pull in either direction. Um, also, I want to point out, if you put it too close to the knock, like if it's too tight and it's pushing on the knock, you'll see the knock do weird things, like it'll be pointing up, or if it's, a, or if it's the top knocking point, it'll, it'll cause the knock to, to point down. So this is hanging you know, pretty well. It's not, it's not really moving up and down at all, but it's also not being affected by the knocking point itself. So now that we have the first piece of the knocking point on there, got that nice and tight, we're going to do the other uh, portions of it. So this is the top side it's done. You're going to do exactly the same thing. So cross them, loop one of the strings through, pull evenly, nice smooth knot going there, pull evenly, evenly, tight again. Every time you want to try to pull pretty much as tight as you can, you know, you can only pull so tight it is, you know, only two hands, you're not using a machine. And you're just going to keep repeating the motion. Now we're at the top because we tightened it from the bottom, so we're on the top again. Crossed them, looped it through, tightened from the top. Back again to the bottom. Um, you're going to want to do this several times. If I were to stop here, this knocking point wouldn't be strong enough to hold the force of the arrow and me shooting the arrow from it, hence why this top knocking point is much thicker. Um, overall, you would have to do the knot tying process, four full rotations, so four times on top, four times on bottom. So we have one, two, three, and we just did the fourth one. So eight all together. So this is number five. Six. Seven. And eight is coming right up. And that was number eight. As you can see, now it has gotten much thicker, and it will stay in place for a very long period of time. Now, eventually these do move, so you do have to watch out. If your knocking point starts uh, you know, to wiggle, like you have your arrow on the, uh, the string, and you can feel that it's moving up and down some, that means you're going to have to redo your knocking point. You can also visually check to see... Uh, you know, how your knocking point's doing. As you shoot more shots through it, you're going to see it start to, uh, you know, decay a little, a little eroding because it's getting a lot of, uh, you know, force put on it. Your hand from the uh, release and the finger tab is, is rubbing on it. So eventually you're going to uh, wear it out. So now that we have our bottom knocking point finished, we get to play with fire. So you can use maybe like a wet cloth or something. Personally, you can just get your two fingers wet. You like that end. And you melt that. Press it down. Now, if your finger's wet, you probably won't burn yourself. But <laughs> if you do, uh, practice makes perfect. And now we're just going to do the back side. And what this does is it glues to some level. It adheres it all together. It makes it stick to 
the center serve of your string and the knocking point itself kind of adheres to itself as you can see it's a little bit more solid now and held together and that should survive several hundred maybe even several thousand shots you know depending on how well you put it on the more knocking points you do the better you're going to be at it mine personally lasts for well over a thousand shots without ever having a problem and then once they do take them off put new ones on and we move on from there but I find this is the best way to put on knocking points uh, well I hope this helped you guys out Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and happy shooting.